Last night, I saw a headline on Haaretz, and it said, report, U.S. asking Israel to delay Gaza invasion. And I'm thinking, wow, like they say in Hebrew, Boker Tov Eliyahu. We're like, well, duh, you know, they, it's just it's ridiculous that they, they've been delaying this, doing whatever it is they're going to do. If you're going to destroy Israel's enemies, they should do it already. And they've just been playing this game. It, it, it's a cynical use of the army that they have all these people waiting in suspense. Also, I, I said a few weeks ago, every regime relies on its robots. You have police people who are just saying, I'm just doing my job, what they call in Hebrew, Rosh Katan. Not thinking, just doing. And sometimes they tell, they're even told to stand down. That's ridiculous. The orders are to protect the people, protect the land, and they're told not to do it. And they even take away guns from people, which is ridiculous. There's a, there's all sorts of crazy things happening. I'm hoping that enough enough police officers wake up and stop enforcing uh, terrible orders. Yeah, whatever. Uh, drawing Yishuvim, preventing Jews from praying on the Temple Mount, preventing Jews from defending themselves, preventing Jews from meeting out justice to their uh, to their oppressors. Those are all things that the police are doing. And I'm hoping that many soldiers of all different ranks also disobey their orders to do things that are suicidal and to sometimes stand down when they have the chance to destroy our enemies and not put themselves at risk, of course. So uh, we, we, that's what we pray for. We pray for proper leadership. I think it would be good if you open up your Sidur. Right? Oh, I don't have my Sidur. It's just for El here. Hmm. Let's just go through. What do we pray for in the uh, regular day? Honen Hada'at. God, give us some Seichel. Right? That's the first thing you ask for. So you could study the Torah, but also you could be a human being. Learn to think for yourself. Right? And then Slich and Mechila. Right? Yes, God, for to Hashivenu. We want to repent. We want to repent. Repentance, like we've been we've been hammering this. Am Yisrael needs to repent for the things that Am Yisrael has been doing wrong. The first national sin described in the Torah. Where the what are the national sins? Well, Chira Egel. First, complaining about God. The the in the the wilderness in forty years of travel, Am Yisrael basically had complaints that showed that they they lacked a certain amount of trust at the beginning. So it was about water. It's about food. Where are we going? You know? No, we're not going anywhere. Lack of trust. I'm, a, I'm not judging them. I'm just telling you what it says in the Torah. Test me ten times. The lack of trust came to a real head when uh, the, with the sin of the spies. They didn't have enough trust to uh, get involved in that Zionist project of settling the land of Israel, making war. And there was Chir Egel, of course. Chir Egel was, was, uh, was um, I, you know, bordering idolatry. And then we get to Am Yisrael and Sefer Yeshua, for which Am Yisrael basically not faulted for anything. Sefer Yeshua is unique because unlike, let's say, the books of Exodus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, there's no criticism of, of Am Yisrael there. There's just a little bit. Yeshua tells the people, you have to continue conquering the land. We haven't finished, we haven't subdued the Canaanim, but he didn't say, oh, you've already failed. Okay, He's, he's telling them, we have to continue. And the book of Judges picks up and says, yeah, but they failed in that that respect. Am Yisroel is doing things backwards. Why? They're making Yishuvim without driving out the hostile, uh, I guess, the hostile invaders. Okay, the, the, other, the others here are not for indigenous. I'm not going to call them natives. They just happen to be here by some historical coincidence. And they shouldn't be here. No one wants them anywhere else in the world. And certainly for us, it's terrible having them around. You know? So the problem is they're faulted for settling in many places without driving out. You have to conquer, you have to drive out, and you have to settle the land. And if you don't do all those in the right order, you're doomed to failure. And that's what we're suffering now. So Am Yisrael's main Avera, for which we have to atone. Yeah, we have to atone also for Grand Pichel Shabbos and also borderline of Odazar, like we mentioned last week. But the sin that brought us to this point is the sin of not obeying the Torah with regards to how to settle the land and have a proper society. Now, they talk about this, the Torah protect, the, the keeping the Torah protect us from harm. It's not some metaphysical, mystical, cosmic, magical uh, concept. If you do not keep the mitzvah of driving out hostile uh, enemies, hostile others from your uh, place, so you're going to get hurt. And if you drive them away, then you're going to have a society. You know, if, let's say, Everybody within the territorial state of Israel, let's say there was a whole buffer zone. Israel was greatly expanded and 
huge buffer zone, 10 miles wide of no settlement of foreigners beyond our borders. There would be very little violent crime in this country. You know that. You don't need police for a Jewish town. Even a secular Jewish town doesn't really need police. Why? Depends on some... Okay, but it's always, it's always the, the others that are doing it. You take these, uh, a lot of moshavs and kibbutzim, which are not necessarily religious. There's still no crime there. You know? There's no such thing. Jewish neighborhoods don't have crime. For the, for the most part, yes, we have our criminals. There's always perverts and other criminals. But it's a much lower percentage. That's why... That's why anybody in the world feels safe walking through a Jewish town at night, right? Yeah. It's not like, oh, no, all those, uh, it's an old Jackie Mason of blessed memory, his joke. Yeah. Someone, if you find yourself in the middle of a Jewish neighborhood in the middle of the night, no one turns to his friend and says, oh, man, you better watch out. There's too many accountants in this neighborhood. You know? yeah, there's a reason. Okay, so yeah. that's what we have to do. And then, we said, uh, we said, uh, we said uh, Slicha and Mechila, right? We ask for God, Shuvah, and we ask him to forgive us, right? And we ask him to redeem us. What does redeem us? Redeem us means allow us to see his divine presence, bring us back to the land of Israel, and uh, give us back our land. Redemption, all, all those all those facets. And then we get to refuah. We want God to heal us. Right? We ask God to heal the sick. Then we ask God for sustenance, baruch that we have, we get our parnasa this year. Then we go into deeper things. We talk about the gathering of the exiles. That's something we look forward to. I do not understand how anybody prays for this. God, in gather our exiles, we, there are people who are paying us to make Aliyah. You know that? We should make Aliyah also. You know, you could do it. I'm not saying you have to do exactly like everybody around. The, uh, you don't necessarily have to be a supporter of the current government. You could be an enemy of the current government. The current governments are enemies anyway. So, But you, uh, it's very important to move here. And then you pray for the destruction of the wicked. Right? Destruction of the wicked. And we pray for judicial reform. Three times a day, at least on weekdays, we pray for judicial reform. I don't know if people are, are, are understanding what they're praying for. We pray for the end of the exile, judicial reform, destruction of the enemies. Go get yourself a proper sidur, the various sidurim, Eretz Yisrael, and other non-censored sidurim. That bracha, l'mal shedim in laminim, it's talking about real destruction of the bad guys. Okay? sefer hayim, like it says in uh, Tilim. And then we ask for also, governmental reform. The rebuilding of Jerusalem and governmental reform. That's what Etha Semach Dawid is about. Uh, and we ask God to hear our prayers. So I hope that people just take a few minutes to understand what they're praying for. How in practice, if, if God were to answer their prayers, how would it come? Say it in English. Sit down like my wife tells people. Think about what you're praying for. Imagine what would be if God actually granted your request.